Change a question, change your life. When it comes to planning your life, I wanna get you to learn to ask three questions now. And the first one is not, what am I gonna do? And how many understand why now? Say I. The question you wanna ask yourself is, what do I want? What's my outcome? What's my result? The word RPM, the first one is to get you focused on the target. The target is not the activity. The activity can change. It's what the, what's the result I'm after? If you know exactly what it is you really want, what you desire, what you're really after, clarity is power. The more clear you are and specifically what you want, the faster your brain can get you there. But if you're generally saying things like, what do I want? Well, you know, I want more money. Fine, here's a dollar, get out of here. <laughs> Did you achieve the outcome? Yeah, when you're that general, you, may be, you think you're not getting your goal, you are. The way you language your goal, the way you think about it, you're receiving it. You know, you know, I, you know, I want to feel a bit better. I want to lose some weight. Fine, you lost a pound, you're done. Because your brain's like a servo mechanism and a bomb and a missile. The old days, you shoot a missile and the target was going, and if you missed the trajectory, you missed it. Today, what happens when the, the missile's not on course? What happens? It locks onto the heat signature, and what does it do? It moves and follows it. That's the way your brain is if it knows the outcome, if it knows the result. So RPM starts with, I got another result. This is a results planning system. The rapid planning method, but you can think of it as a results planning system. I need to know the result I'm after before I ever ask myself what to do. That takes more time, but it's worth it. Now, for time's sake, I'm not gonna do this with you right now, but I'll tell you what I do when I've taught this to people and I've got a full weekend to do this in. Just give you a picture. If I asked you right now to write out your name, your full name, now some of you abbreviate your signature, but write out your full name in cursive, Go and do that one time, write your full name in cursive. I can't even use the word cursive. Is that really the word people still use? It means in handwriting, I guess, but in cursive. Just write it out full name, because you can do this later on. Now, if I had you get with a partner, and you can try this later if you want, I'm just gonna tell you because I don't wanna take the time because we have such limited time today. And I have your partner say to you with a stopwatch here, okay, ready? And I go, go, and you write it out. And you tell me when you're done, it'll stop. And I write down how long that was. So let's say you wrote out your signature and it took five seconds. And they say, ready? Write it out, ready, go. You tell me you're done, stop. And I write down, five seconds. I have to do that 10 times. You'll find in the beginning, you'll be, let's say, six seconds. I'm making it up, every signature's different. And you probably might get down to as little as five seconds. If you have like an iPhone, you could do it as a digital stopwatch, you could see the middle seconds. Then I say to you, I want you guys to write every other letter in cursive. In other words, you're going to write half as many letters. How long do you think it would take to do it? Half as much time? Most of you will take twice as much time in the beginning, and then eventually, what's interesting is, if I do it 10 times, and the last two or three, and this makes no logical sense, and again, I don't want to take the time to have all of you do this 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, but you can go do it on your own, I'll just tell you the result. In most cases, even though you're doing half as many letters, you cut it by two-thirds of the time. There's something happens when you break an old pattern and you do it fresh. Your brain over the years has learned ways to move more rapidly since when you did your original signature and you'll do it in a third the amount of time. It'll take twice as much at first and then it'll cost you a third amount of time. Now let me tell you why I'm telling you this. The system I'm calling the rapid planning method, by the time I show it to you, you're gonna go, this takes more time than just making my to-do list. It will win. When will it take more time? When? Initially. But once you get it in your nervous system, it'll take you less time because your brain will be thinking in outcomes and not activities. And when you think in terms of outcomes and not activities, pretty soon some of the activities in your list you don't even need to do to get the outcome. You find a better way to get the outcome quicker. Now, how do you do that? You ask three questions. Question one, what is my result? What is my outcome? What is it I really, truly want from this? If you're going back next week and you say this next week, what are the most important what? outcomes for me to get this week in my business and you just write those outcomes out not your action items the outcomes you if you do that nothing else you'll be ahead of the game and if you just keep looking at those outcomes every day how am i doing on that outcome your brain will come up with ways to get to that outcome i promise you focus on outcomes not on activities action for most people activities most people may mistake movement for achievement they mistake action items and to-dos for achievement. We're after the achievement. Are you with me on this, yes or no? Yes. It's a different way of thinking, and I think all of you inherently have it, 
But if you make this ritualized, just like the things you've learned this week, they're all great. But if you don't systematize them, they'll work when you do them. But if you systematize them, right? And you see like Mr. Holloman here, where he goes in and just does it and does it and makes sure it's being done again, or what you've seen Chet do or what I do. You just do it over and over again. You don't miss it. Now the results are geometric. So I want to get you to systematize the thinking, whether you do it visually the way I'm going to show you or not. So first question, what's the result I'm after? What's the ultimate result? What do I want out of this week, out of this thing, out of my business, out of my life, out for my body? And you want to be as what as possible when you describe that outcome, that result is what? As clear and specific as possible. Generalities will confuse you. So it might take you longer than just writing down call so-and-so to think if I'm calling my, my son, I'm going to call Jarek, or I'm going to call my brother. This is what goes through my head before I call him always. What's my outcome? Because I don't want to just call him. I want Jarek to feel loved by his dad, or I'm thinking about what's my outcome. I've got to talk to him about this thing that's out there. I've got to make sure I get through to him on this because I want to guide him and move him in this direction. That's what I want to be as his father. I, wanna, I don't want to just chit chat. I can do that too. So. If you think before every phone call, before every time you're planning your day, and you think before you have any meeting, what do you think the first thing I ask of anyone when we sit down in a meeting is? Okay, what are your, what are your outcomes? What, what are the outcomes for this meeting? First thing I want to know, because if I know the outcomes, guess what? A lot of meetings, they're done pretty quick. Because if I know the outcome, you don't have to go through all the activities to sell me on it. Just that's your outcome? How do you want to do it? Sounds good to me. Rock. That's how you make a meeting productive. I know a meeting's productive not by the hours or time. Sometimes it takes longer to the outcome than you want, but I'm gonna get the outcome. That's by the way, what you see with me on stage. That's why my time's very, but it's based on an outcome. I'm gonna get that outcome. I don't give a damn whether it's the right time or not. I wanna do it in that time, but I must deliver the outcome. I'm gonna get that. And by the way, how many like to have your company focused on outcomes, results, and not activities? Say I. People say all the time, well, did you get that done? Well, you know, I left them an email. I, I, I left them a voicemail. I've sent them three emails. How many times have you heard that? When that happens with me, I'm like, ah! You know, but I don't show it. I just like, really? Wow, that's fascinating. We'll explain our, about our culture. It's about getting the result. So I can help you if you can't figure another way to do it, but there may be 12 other things we might want to do. Maybe they don't have the answer. Maybe somebody else can give us the answer. The outcome was to get this information, not to leave an email or 12 or three voicemails. That will not do any of us any good. How many follow? I work out, I train my mind, I train my body, and it becomes a lifestyle. It's not just the, like you're depending upon somebody else. I'm not here to become somebody's guru. I'm not here to give them a gift. I'm here for them to open up their own gifts. And that's really what my work has been. Yes. I get frustrated, I get angry, I get all those things. I just don't stay there. I mean, I used to be there for a month or two. I, was, I used to live in depression. I was 38 pounds heavier than I am now. I, I lost all everything. I moved into a little 400 square foot bachelor apartment in Venice, California, feeling sorry for myself. But I got so near the end where you think life has no meaning. It scared the hell out of me and I developed tools and I've never gone back there. I mean, have I gotten pissed or angry? Of course, people all think, you're not happy all the time, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not happy all the time. But I'm happy the vast majority of the time because I'm doing what I love with who I love and there's a meaning in what I do. And when you have those three things, Life is pretty magnificent. I'm a much more balanced than I was, but I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stronger than I've been when I can lift at 55 years old than when I was 27, right? I'm, I can run faster, I feel stronger. There are limits to what you can do as you age, but thus far, I haven't hit that limit yet. I'm, my event, as you know, I go on stage, I'm on, I do 18 to 20 miles in the first day, and I do 26 miles. I'm on from eight in the morning to 1 a.m. with a one hour break, and people oh can vote with goodness. their feet. Oprah says to me, Tony, she's. You know, I love you, but I can't sit anywhere for two hours. And then she's standing on a couch at the end on camera. Going, this is one of the greatest experiences of my life. Usher, same thing. He goes, Tony, I can't go anywhere for a day. And four days later, he's like, oh, these are incredible. <laughs> people sitting still, right? You know, it's like, I remember I said, emotion comes from motion. And also, a minute feels like an eternity when you don't like what you're doing. Right. When you're, all your needs are fulfilled, time flies. So I get time to disappear for people so they can transform. And I do it because I've done it for so long. I can take, I'm doing an event in LA um, in a couple weeks in October 22nd, 23rd, 24th. And we have 8,000 people from, I think it's 49 countries are translating five languages. 
and people from every walk of life, from young kids to people older, athletes, entertainers, average people will all come and become a family and transform in ways that are just extraordinary. At the end, it feels like a mosh pit, like at a, at a, at a, <laughs> at a, a giant concert with people, and they just have a blast. Yeah, great music, by the way. Really? You're, you're a heavy metal guy. I was trying to tell <laughs> well, him I have all kinds of things. When I heard ACDC, Greg says, oh, Tony likes this. Tony likes ACDC. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but we love everything. We do a mix, because we, we, we use music as the soundtrack to our lives. And so we pull from all kinds of types of music. I think you were like so a John Tesh kind of guy. That new <laughs> age John kind Tesh. Of, you know that new age kind of music. <laughs> no. Not so much.